In this video, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction on how to use the parsing module in Logic 2010. The modules are where you actually have to go to select the problems you want to do. So here are all the modules here, but in this video we're just going to do a couple questions from parsing. So we click parsing and a new window opens uh, that is the parsing module. So from here we can select the question you want to do. So you just click select and a big sort of list comes uh, open with questions from all sorts of different chapters. Now we're just going to do two of these. So the first one we'll do is, uh, let's do this one, 1.017. So you double click it or you hit OK and it'll open the question. Now the parsing module is pretty straightforward. What it wants you to do is that it wants you to identify the type of notation or if it's not well formed. And it also wants you to basically parse the question or the statement down into its atomic parts. So parsing means what you're doing is at each stage you're identifying the main connective. So let's not worry about the notation yet. Let's just focus on the statement itself. So if we look at the statement, what's the main connective? Well, what we're looking for is what connective actually binds everything. So we can see this conditional is bound by these two brackets here. Uh, same with this conditional. Negations always modify the thing right next to it, so it's got to be this conditional in the middle that actually binds everything together. So to use the parsing module, you just click on the connective uh, that is the main connective at each level. And so it turned green and then it opens up. Now what it does, it says, okay, this connective is binding two things, this and this. And that makes sense because the conditional is a binary connective. So we basically just play the game again. On this side, what is the main connective of this statement here? Well, again, we look, and it should be straightforward that it's the conditional that binds everything, and there we go. Now we're not quite done. This Q is on its own, and that's great. But here we still have negation P, which is not an atomic yet. So here I have to select the main connective. Well, there's only one connective. It's the negation. There you go. So I've fully parsed the left side or the antecedent of the main statement here. And now I'm just left P, Q. Now over here we'll do the same thing, but what happens if I make a mistake? So what happens if I think it's actually the conditional here that's the main connective? Uh, as opposed to negation. Well, if I click it, it's not a big deal. It turns red, makes this funny noise at me, and you can just keep going. So similarly with uh, uh, S and R, uh, if I click the wrong things, um, it's, it basically says no. So this is nice because uh, this is a learning program, so you don't have to worry about knowing the answers and stuff like that. You can just guess through it, but it's the point is that you'll uh, learn and it'll teach you from your mistakes. So there I click negation, and I go ahead and I click the conditional again, and there, I fully parse the question. Now at this point, if I hit check, it actually says up here that the question's incomplete. But notice there's two parts of the question. Over here, I have completed it, I've parsed the question, but over here I just have to select the correct notation. So is it official, informal, or not well formed? Well, it's surely well formed, so the only question is, is it official or informal? And official means every single binary connective has a pair of brackets around them, which is the case. So I click official, I check one more time, and it changes to correct and correct. So at this point, when you have a good uh, answer and it's correct, uh, you would save it, and then if it was a test question, you would then submit it later on. Okay, so let's just do another one. Uh, I won't bother saving my work here. Uh, and I'm going to go down to 2.008 and click OK and fire up another question. Now again, the system here is the same, so I'm just going to cruise through this, but I just want to point out that this is clearly informal notation. So what happens? Well, what we have to remember is that conditional is at the top of the hierarchy, so conditional must be the main connective. The consequent, S, is no problem. There's nothing to do here. I can't parse it anymore. But the question is, when I have P and Q and R, which is the main connective between these two conjunctions? Well, we use the right-hand rule, and we realize that it's got to be this because they're all the same and then it's got to be that one because that's the only connective left. At this point, it's surely not official notation. It also is well-formed, so it's got to be informal. Check, correct, complete, correct, and then save your work. So that's it for the parsing module. Uh, give it a shot, and it should be no problem.